If you are into gene expression analysis of next generation sequencing or transcriptome data, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome back to Bioinformatics series of Explore Bio with Dr. Abhishek. And today, in very simple terms, we will learn about the three most popular methods of read normalization RPKM, FBKM, and TPM for more precise gene expression analysis and what is the basic difference among them. While performing gene expression analysis with NGS or transcriptome data, you get sequence data in the form of raw reads. However, uneven DNA library concentration or uneven pooling for multiplexing may result in significant deviation in the data generated among the samples after sequencing. Thus, the library that dominates the sequencing flow cell will result in overrepresented reads, while lower concentration libraries will result in underrepresented sequencing reads. Analysis of such raw data generally results in misinterpretation of gene expression data that can have serious consequences. To overcome the variation in the sequence data generated across the libraries, either you need to resequence those underrepresented libraries that would cost you additional time and money, or you can opt for a more popular and cost effective ways like read normalization. Read normalization is a computational approach to statistically bring the similar data together and reduce the analysis errors by minimizing the data variation due to technical errors. It ensures that the measured expression level reflect true biological differences among the samples rather than the technical artifacts. Coming on to the three ways of normalizing read data. The first one is RPKM or reads per kilobase million. It is mainly meant for analyzing single-ended RNA sequencing data. Here, single read corresponds to single fragment. To calculate RPKM, first all the reads of the sample are counted and divided by scaling factor or 1 million to obtain reads per million or RPM. This is the first normalization which is based on the sequencing depth. To know more about the sequencing depth or coverage, you can watch this video. This is followed by the second normalization which is done by further dividing it by the gene length in kilobases to get RPKM. But the major limitation with RPKM is that it cannot handle paired ended data efficiently. To overcome this limitation, we use FPKM. FPKM is very similar to RPKM in most sense. But the major difference is that FPKM can handle the paired ended data also. In paired ended data, two reads correspond to one fragment, and unlike RPKM, FPKM does not count such paired-ended reads twice. Thus, FPKM is suitable for both single as well as paired-ended reads. Another important read normalization method, which is becoming more popular nowadays, is TPM, which stands for transcripts per kilobase million. Unlike RPKM and FPKM, which normalizes the data first based on the sequencing depth, TPM normalizes first by gene length and then by sequencing depth. The major advantage of TPM is that it facilitates direct comparison of the proportion of reads mapped to a gene across the samples. TPM is preferred for its consistent normalization and ease of sample comparison. To sum up, in both RPKM and FPKM, first normalization is performed based on the depth and then by gene length. Between the RPKM and FPKM, FPKM is more suitable for paired ended reads. And among the three, TPM is often considered the best choice because it normalizes for the gene length first and ensures consistent proportion across the samples. You can consult a bioinformatician or a statistician for finding out which of these normalization parameters are more suited for your analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below for your queries and suggestions. I usually respond to them. Do check out my playlist for more such informative content. Till then, stay curious.